Hello, I am Seamus Dunhu of EVE University, and this is the seventh and final chapter of my playthrough of the Sisters of EVE Level 1 Epic Arc, The Bloodstained Stars. So, uh, the mission to come here from Tanu can be accepted remotely. So I'm going to talk to the agent, accept remotely, close, and talk to Sister Alatura. Uh, and Sister Alatura first wants me to deliver some identity records. Set destination, add waypoint. Um, I don't remember if I'm going to come back here immediately. I probably will, but let me move my ammunition with me just in case. Let's click accept. Move the altered identity records. And on dock, and I am going to skip ahead to the part where I deliver this stuff. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. All right. Talking to Sister Alatura, request the next mission. Sounds good, please stop by so we can formalize the contract. All right, so I gotta go back to Arnon then. I couldn't remember off the top of my head. All right. Talk to Sister Alatura. Oh, by the way, at this point, uh, you may get some sort of an offer for a storyline mission. So if you look at your notifications, I am in need of your services, tutorial guide Dunhu for a very special mission. This has to do with something not exactly related to the epic arc. Uh, when you run regular missions, which I have not covered in How to Survive EVE Online or this series yet. Uh, but when you co uh, run regular missions, every 16 regular missions that you complete of the same faction and level, you will get a, an offer for a storyline mission of the same faction and level. Strangely enough, missions in the epic arc do count uh, towards these triggers. So you might see these... Um, notifications asking you to meet somebody in a particular station and take a special mission from them. You can do that afterwards if you wish. Um, you will want to check eve-survival.org. I will probably show that to you uh, towards the end of the episode, but that is not related to the epic arc, and that offer can wait a week maximum. So, for the epic arc... Deliver Tahaki Karen to the Society of Conscious Thought Luxury Space Liner. If you recall, Tahaki Karen was the engineer that you rescued back in Chapter 1. Tahaki Karen. Her face is close enough if you've only seen a photo or a hologram. Right height, right weight. Her voice is close enough, too. Accent, vocabulary, everything suggests this is Tahaki Karen. She isn't, of course, but you've been forewarned. Anyone who knew the original would find themselves hard put to detect the mimic. There are little things, though. The scar, the scar on her neck is newer. Uh, her nails are filed smooth rather than roughly clipped, and she listens to everything. She doesn't make a point of it, of course. But she's taking in everything, the whine of the electrical system, the buzz coming off the gravity plating. Who is she, really? You don't know. But she's closer to being Karen than she is anyone else. Close enough. Alright, let's run the micro warp drive. One more cycle should suffice. 
control spacebar. Let's open cargo and transfer her over. Republic Intelligence tells me you might have a lead on our prodigal son, Dagon. He needs to be taken down for everyone's good. The Republic will watch your back. By the way, in between episodes, I decided to change my hotkeys because the default hotkeys were playing havoc with my muscle memory. So I changed this to be Q, W, E, R, T, uh, lock target I leave, alo I leave alone as control. But basically, the order of the buttons on the selected item box, I changed to be the same order as the keys on my keyboard personal preference. Your mileage may vary. Alright. Uh, destroy the Society of Conscious Thought Spy. Alright, let's undock. Warp drive active. All right, phase plasma, and I will pack Scourge for this. I, I don't remember what damage types the, these targets will be weakest against. Warp drive active. Imicus, Mollus, Imicus, Atron, Mollus, uh, generally Galente themed vessels. I chose pretty well. Um, I'll get the Inferno rockets, actually. And I suspect that Society Spy is going to do the most damage to me. I am Admiral Yusef from Issue Kone, Internal Security. We've been monitoring data traffic between you and the Sirdred Sisters of Eve. No, don't get excited. We're all on the same side here. The state will help you get Dagon. As long as you turn, hand him over to us once you've got him. Hmm. Alright, hold on. I wanted to loot this wreck here. Alright. Let's return to station. Let me skip ahead a little bit because I need to reconfigure my mouse. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Alright, my mouse buttons have reconfigured back to their EVE Online settings. Uh, so my hotkeys for controlling my drones will actually work this time. Alright, chasing shadows. 
uh, eliminate the squadron and bring Crits and Parthis back for interrogation. This is usually the first mission where a lot of players need help from other players uh, to finish the Sisters of Eve epic arc. And you know what? Let me move my excess ammunition back into station because I'm going to be fighting an NPC battlecruiser now. This may end in fun for Dwarf Fortress definitions of fun. In other words, to say fun equals losing. Let's accept this, close. Uh, the targets I'm going to face are going to be generally weak to EM thermal damage, so the Hobgoblin should be okay for this. Uh, Crits and Parthus uh, will also be weak to EM thermal damage. He does a lot of energy neutralizing. If I stay within 40 kilometers, I fully expect him to empty out my capacitor, which will be bad. Um, a possible strategy I could use is to just get in... First of all, figure out a way to pick off the enemy frigates from long range, probably with just the drones. Let's see. I don't think I've been training drone avionics. No, I have not. So my drone control range is still 30 kilometers. All right. And of course, I've been filming these episodes a lot more frequently than I thought I would be, so I haven't finished training up drones level 5. So I can't use a full flight of drones. More importantly, um, I cannot inject a drone interfacing. Alright, let me deal with the frigates at long range first. I'm going to shoot the frigates once from way out of range of my guns just to get their attention. Right, Crits and Parthis has just fried one of my drones. Well, I'm down to four thermal drones now. Oh, right, reinforcements. And he started shooting another of my drones. I gotta pull those back in. Alright. Yeah, my high slot weapons won't actually do anything this far out. Alright, he's doing a lot of damage to me, so I'm going to align to Stargate Adarain, since it happens to be conveniently in front of me. Alright, pull drones. And warp. So yeah, that's how fast my capacitor um, was emptied by Crits and Parthus. He energy neutralizes. Yeah. Uh, by the way, don't actually jump through Stargate Adarain. Adarain is low security. You jump through there, uh, you will probably be killed by any players who happen to be on the other side. Let me dock up uh, just to get my shields and capacitor fixed up again. And I wonder if I can get any replacement hobgoblins. Yep. 
Yes. I'm gonna get 16 of them. I figure I'm gonna need them. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Now granted, I can only deploy four at a time. Uh, the point of having 16 is to be able to replace them as needed. Uh, so, let me open up my fitting window. Move out all of my drones. Wait, did I buy these in another station? Ah, Arnon 8 Moon 2 CBD Corporation Storage. I bought them in another station. All right. I know how to fix that problem. Go to the other station and pick them up. But yeah, I aligned to an object in the distance. Again, let me um, reiterate. Uh, to align to some... In, before your ship can go to warp to a destination, your ship has to be moving towards that destination within about 8 degrees and going at least 75% of your current maximum speed. If your ship is not aligned to the target you tell it to warp to, your ship has to first maneuver at sublight speed in order to align. So right now I'm aligned, so if I click warp, it doesn't need to spend any extra time aligning, it just poof, goes off into warp. Whereas if I were going in a completely different direction, it would take a number of seconds for my ship to turn around and become aligned to the destination before it could possibly enter warp. So if you're in a situation where you might need to get out in a very big hurry, uh, you want to align to something, it doesn't matter what, and if you make the decision, yes, I need to get out of here right now, you will you warp to the thing that you have aligned to. Alright. Dock. Now, drones in my main cargo hold are not going to do anything. I cannot swap them into the drone bay on my own. Not without assistance from a ship that has fitting services, like an orca. If I'm off by myself, there's no way I can move my drones from here to here. By myself, that's not possible. Alright, let's go back. And try this again. And I reloaded with the wrong stuff. EMP Mjolnir, because I'm expecting to deal EM damage. And you know what? Since I have drones to spare and they're cheap drones to boot, All right, I'm gonna close. Did I launch? I didn't launch. All right, so my drones attack Crits and Parthus first. So Crits and Parthus is uh, worrying about shooting my drones. It's kinda hard for a battlecruiser to smack a drone with its main weaponry for exactly the same reason that it's kinda hard to smack a frigate. The drone is much smaller than the weapon expects. 
Uh, and yeah, as you can see, Crits and Parthus is having a really hard time smacking my drone around. Plus, this has the added benefit of he's probably trying to energy neutralize the drone rather than me. Uh, that could, of course, change, uh-oh, at any given time, like, say, right now, where he decides I'm the bigger threat. So yeah, you can see these red-orange streams. He is tracking disrupting me, and he is cap neutralizing me. So he's emptying out my capacitor. He's dead. And Crits and Parthus has been captured. And I'm going to right-click, save location, and submit so I can come back to here later. That did not end as hilariously badly as I had feared. Warp drive active. Sisters of Eve Bureau. That's an Amar citizen you've kidnapped, pilot. But if I understand your motives correctly, we can overlook that. Once you've extracted Dagon's location, we'll help you bring the hammer of God down on that guy. All right. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Par Parthus is an Amar pirate. Quiet in person, he's known both as a wild gambler and a man who can cover his bets. His success in outfitting and executing illegal missions is similar. He takes a lot of risks, but thinks practically and can generally repay his debts. Alright, let's request the next mission. Now here, you're asked to choose a commander. Uh, the f when you turn in the final step of this epic arc, uh, you will receive a standings boost with whichever Empire's commander that you chose. So if you select the Amar commander, then when you finish the Sisters of Eva level 1 epic arc, you will get a small standings boost with the Amar faction, which will give you some help in getting access to level 2 missions uh, with Amarian agents all across the cluster. Uh, it only, uh, your choice of commander really only affects what uh, faction you get a standings boost with. You may hear the myth that whatever Dagon, whatever damage types Dagon is weak to depends upon this choice. That is wrong. Dagon is always going to be weak to explosive kinetic, regardless of your choice here. So I'm just going to go with the Amar commander. That, uh, she will be in Monarch. I will accept this choice. Uh, and we're going to go out and meet the Amar commander. And I am going to want warrior drones since I want to deal explosive kinetic damage. And warriors deal explosive damage. A uh, little bit pricey here in Arnon, but um, 15 of them... You know what, I've already got ten I've already got five. I'll just get ten of these. Price of convenience, eh? And conveniently they are here in station. Uh so let me move these. Oh, you know what? My drones took some damage, so let me get a repair quote on my ship. I can repair their hobgoblin with 30 isk. Repair all. That's cheap. Uh, Alright, I've got warriors. Let me make sure I'm packing the right damage types for everything. EMP is not explosive kinetic. So let me offload 2,000 rounds. Because uh, I don't want to have to replace the unnecessary rounds if my ship gets blown up. It's the fusion that I'm going to need. And depending upon how slowly this goes, I may need to use a lot of fusion. Where did... here's my Nova rockets. All right. Yeah, 
You know what? I'm pretty sure I'm not going to need these. Straight up explosive. Alright. Let's undock. Now, the estimates I've heard thrown around are that you want to be able to deal at least 100 damage, to maybe 110 damage per second, uh, according to your fitting window, uh, in order to take down Dagon solo. And that's going to be rather slow, because keep in mind, Dagon has self-repair capabilities. He can repair the damage that you're dealing to him. Uh, or... To be more precise, I think it, the NPC acts like it has a shield booster, so it can boost its own shields, but it cannot repair its armor or structure. So given the fact that he can repair his own shields, beside, uh, in addition to any passive shield recharge he may have, uh, it's important to be able to deal the right damage types to him. Dagon has significant resistances. His weakest resistance is 72% explosive resistance. His other resistances are higher and I think go up to like 88% on for EM, but I'm pulling that from memory. Our man Dagon. So let's accept and warp to location. Warp drive active. So, yeah. Um, choosing the right damage type is important because if you're using EM thermal weaponry, uh, the amount of damage... the amount of damage that's actually getting through to him is cut in half compared to explosive and kinetic. So, if you can do a lot of explosive damage to him, that is ideal. All right. Now there's a bin of now some NPCs have shown up, some of which were ostensibly on your side, but they got blown up. They managed to blow up some other NPCs here. I don't want to have to deal with his escorts. All right, Dagon is now using something called target painting. That's a type of electronic warfare that makes me a bigger target. And Dagon has a plus 100% bonus target painter. I wish I had target painters that good. But yeah, basically, um... Dagon can target paint. Uh, to make you a bigger target. So I'm now about the size of a cruiser. I'm going to take cruiser levels of damage. So let me orbit him. At 500 meters. He's got auto cannons, And as cruiser weapons go. Auto cannons have good tracking speeds. And the fact that he's also target painting me. Um, might pose a problem. But now I'm circling him at 200 milliradians per second. So I'm not taking too much damage from him, thankfully. If I make the mistake of stopping, I am in so much trouble. But yeah, 116.2 free resistance damage per second. And it's I'm barely making a dent in his shields. They're slowly starting to go down, but yeah. Kinda important that I keep up my speed. It's gonna take me a while to kill him. So 116.2 He's 
100% resistant to explosive. So I multiply by 0.28. He's actually taking about 32.5 damage per second after resistances. The drones are all explosive damage. The missiles are all explosive damage. The projectiles are a slightly different story. They're mostly explosive damage, but close enough. 10 explosive, 2 kinetic. His second weakest resistance is kinetic, which should be in somewhere in the mid to high 70% resistant. So yeah, to be it is a tough target. Now, his shields are down to around 32-35% or some such. Um, now that I think about it, the last time I refilmed the Bloodstained Stars... The last time I filmed Bloodstained Stars, uh, I was kind of having trouble around this point, which suggests to me maybe it's not a shield booster. Dagon probably just has really good passive shield regeneration. Shields will recharge on their own if left alone. The rate is not a constant. Shields would charge fastest at the 25% mark, and slower the further you away you get from 25%, either up or down. So now his shields recharged slowly as I was attacking him at first because he was near 100%. Shield recharges slow near 100%. It sped up the further down I beat him. At 25%, he gave me the most trouble. But now that he's well below 25%, his... Uh, now that he's well below 25%, uh, his shields are recharging slowly. If I had drones level 5, I could have deployed a 5th drone to make this go a bit faster. Uh, so that would have given me another 12.5 pre-resistance damage per second. Let me get the rockets going on him again. Once I had drones level 5, I could have trained... Drone interfacing. Let me close this. So drones interfacing requires drones level 5, and every level of this is a 10% uh, bonus to drone damage and drone mining yields per level. Why did I think this was 20%? Right, this used to be 20% per level. I think crowd control productions shifted the some of the bonuses around with the drone skills that I forgot to keep up with the patch notes. But yeah, I could have quick once I had drones five, I could have quickly trained up two or three levels of drone interfacing, give my drones that extra punch. I'm spending enough time at this that I probably want to keep an eye out for uh, scanner probes. It is possible for somebody to use combat scanner probes to scan you down in your mission and then work to you and kill Dagon quickly and then steal Dagon and hold him hostage so that you cannot turn in the mission unless you pay that play player your entire wallet. I know that the official EVE Online wiki article on Rookie Systems says that newbie briefing is a violation of CCP rules in the 12 spawning systems, the 12 tutorial hub systems, and Arnon, but I don't know if that extends to the Dagon fight because that is not in Arnon. So you want to try to be quick about this, if at all possible. There are players who will help out new players with this. All right, let me grab Dagon real quick. Quick, 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 quick. Loot done. Save location. 
And let's warp back to Lair Evanus. And reload. Dagon lies imprisoned within his pod. Distorted through the glass, you can see impressive, impressive chiseled features contorted in impotent rage. He knows he is at your mercy, and has every reason to fear the mercy of a capsule pilot. All right, let's talk to Lear Evanus, or whichever faction commander you chose. Complete the mission. Rarely is the wrath of God demonstrated in such fiery terms. Congratulations, pilot. Dalsegno Alfine. The Sisters of Eve have requested that we turn Dagon to their forces as payment for their aid. They're welcome to him. The sisters may appear peaceful, but we are providing the society member no mercy by delivering him to their care. The Sisters of Eve convoy awaits the delivery of Dagon. They wish you to do the honors. I can think of no one more appropriate. Deliver Dagon to the awaiting Wreath Class Industrial. So let's accept. Uh, and Dagon is put back into your cargo hold. Del Signo Alfine, warp to location. Warp drive. And I'm going to turn up the music volume. And I'm probably going to bump off the acceleration gate if I try to activate it from here. Move up a little bit. Full stop. Actually, let's reverse thrust. There we go. Full stop. And activate. Warp drive active. Hello, old friend. Simply deposit Dagon in the Wreath Prison Transport, and your long journey will be at an end. No matter what you see, I must ask you to stay calm and do not fire. Drone structure. This gigantic superstructure was built by the effort of thousands of rogue drones. While the structure appears to be incomplete, its intended shape remains a mystery to the clueless carbon-based life forms. And Crowd Control Productions has changed the Acceleration Gate music. This used to play the login music during the Apocrypha expan- that was originally introduced in Apocrypha expansion. Hmm. Here we have a Kaldari Raven, a Minmatar Tempest, a, an Amarian Armageddon, and a Galente Dominix. Let's move Dagon in. And the drone structure disappears in a flash of light. I told you you had nothing to fear, pilot. Thanks to your help, the rogue drones need no longer be a hindrance to our efforts. Return to your commander and tell him Dagon will no longer trouble the empires. Farewell. Perhaps there is hope for your kind yet. Uh, let's save this location as a safe spot, as usual. And let's go back to Lear Evanus. I am given to understand, I have been told that if you cannot complete any particular mission in the Sisters of Eve Epic Arc, and you have to quit the mission, you can restart from the beginning of the chapter that you had, that you were in the middle of. I have not tested this for myself. In any event, 
all epic arcs are repeatable every three months from the date that you've last finished it, succeed or fail. So, let's talk to Lear Evanis. Complete the mission. Alright, so the Soulless Drones returned. Hold on, let me turn this down again. So the Soulless Drones returned. I confess their behavior is strange. I had heard that the automatons have a free will of their own, but I never gave it much weight until now. There's something much larger going on than we realize. But that is a mystery for another day. You have been an ally to the Empress and the Amar people. Whether you continue your efforts defending the Empires, or forge your own empires with your fellow Capsuleers in the depth of lawless space, know that you have proven your worth as a Capsuleer. And, of course, go to the standing section. Here are the factions. Amar Empire, one positive 1.33 standings. Good. Right-click, show transactions. And yes, there we have it. Here are the standings gains we got from each of the tutorial hub missions from when I filmed How to Survive Eve Online, and now Del Segno Alfine. By the way, these gains can be increased if you inject the social skill and train it to uh, at least a level or two or four. You can get social from most places where you can get other skill books. It's a pretty basic skill book. Um, but yeah, with 1.33 standings, I can now work for any level 2 agent in any Amarian NPC corporation. So, that concludes the Sisters of Eve level 1 epic arc, the Bloodstained Stars. At this point, players diverge very drastically in what they do. Hold on, let me start moving back to Arnon. Uh, players diverge very drastically in what they do. Uh, many stick to high security mission running, working for regular agents. If you want to start running level 1 or level 2 missions for NPC agents, um, Business Agent Finder. And you can look for, and there's filter options right here. Uh, and you can start looking for level 1 agents to work for. Distribution agents just want you to haul things from point A to point B. Not particularly exciting, Many some players find it kind of boring, but you're as long as you're sticking to high security space and you're not flying during a war declaration, uh, you're probably not going to get blown up. You can still run courier missions even if you are in a war declaration or if you're operating outside high security space, but that requires more precautions. Uh, you will probably want to look up uh, tips and tricks on how to do low security hauling for that sort of thing. Security missions generally give you stuff to fight, and mining missions have you mine specialized asteroid ores, which are not useful on the open market, cannot be refined into anything, but the agent wants it for some strange reason or other. So you can still build up standings with NPC agents, NPC corporations, uh, through mining processes rather than combat. Do be aware, some mining missions do have a small amount of combat. Warp drive active. Uh, if you just want to mine on your own, you can go to any, asteroid, uh, any solar system, go to asteroid belts, uh, pick an asteroid belt, mosey on up to an asteroid and start mining. You will probably want to know the drone skill and bring a couple of drones with you because in 0 0.8 security and below, NPC pirates will sometimes show up to harass you. And it's nice to be able to kill them so that you don't have to worry about them further while mining. Uh, I've mentioned the market before. Uh, you can learn how to play the market, set up your own buy and sell orders. Uh, you will probably want to join some player corporation. Uh, if EVE University is at peace, then I strongly recommend EVE University. Of course, I am biased. Uh, other organizations that I've heard of that are open to uh, new pilots are Red vs. Blue. 
which is primarily PvP-centric. Agony Unleashed is also PvP-centric. Uh, Brave Newbies Incorporated. Who else? I do want to give out a shout out to a player called Sindel Pelion, who created some another charity for new players called The Angel Project. Uh, so similar charity work for new players as what EVE University does. Uh, there are lots of things that you can do, and if you want to ask questions, you can ask questions in Rookie Help. You can also ask questions in the E-UNI chat channel. To find it, you would click on any speech bubble in your chat window. Uh, as of the current version of EVE Online, uh, the EVE University public channel has been granted the honor of being designated an official help channel, so you can click the join button next to EVE University under the help header. And you can ask questions here. Please do be mindful of our cha chat channel rules. If you're too disruptive, our personnel officers will ban you from the channel. Uh, but that niggling little detail aside, uh, you can ask questions there and, about how the game works uh, and advice on what to do and how to do it. EVE Online has a lot of depth to it. This is really just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much that I have not covered that I cannot possibly cover in just 12 hours of video. Uh, Whatever your choices, I wish you luck, fly safe, I am Seamus Dunahoo of EVE University, and thank you for watching.